everyone. Um, thanks for having me as well. It's nice being um, at the Burgess Foundation because Pariah Press, who published um, my debut pamphlet, um, Al Splinter, um, also published some work from the Burgess Archives, so it's a nice connection there. Um, I'm going to start off with a poem called Martlet Song. Um, some context for this. I'm from Bradford. That was a pause for applause. Um, <laughs> <laughs> City of Culture next year. Um, and there's a place in Bradford called Bolling Hall, which is supposedly haunted. And um, within Bolling Hall, there's some beautiful stained glass windows. And one of these has um, the figure of a martlet on the crest. Um, for those of you that don't know, martlet is a mythical bird, sort of like a swift, but it has no legs so it can never stop, and it's birthed in flight, and then it just dies. Um, so, mark that song. I come to you with a parliament of quandaries, levitating through leaded fog set in the windows of my house body. Where do I fit in this restless thrash of feather and beak? Born into incessant flight, signifying hardship, Rendered swift-like and squat until legless bodies fall from a sky heraldic. We were speaking about apparitions to the museum guard at Bolling Hall, watching a wax replica of Cromwell's death mask, wondering how it ended up here in manorial waste, its yellow translucency mingled with an odour of wattle and daub, invoking interregnum the battle of Od Walton Moor. You say I need a haircut. I look like a roundhead. Martlets snowing from elm trees. Pity poor Bradford, the white ghost whispered to the Earl of Newcastle in the witching hour close to dawn. The charge of Martlets saw it all. Centuries later, us two, desperate to see something unreal, because England's reality is brutal and the reality of the world is too real. When I was young, they used to paint a wax-sealed stamp of blood on the impact site where a woman died after being pushed over the balcony. Where do we go after disaster? After life, when the wings are closed to visitors? Below us, a system of underground tunnels for when birds hail out of the sky and war feels closer than breath ever could. And um, the next poem I'm going to read is called Cuckoo Song. Now you may notice a bird theme there. Um, these are from a manuscript called Volatile, which um, broadly considers how crises interlink and what happens when different crises impact each other and become more than the sum of their parts. And um, I was listening to the news a lot when I was writing this, as it's sometimes unavoidable, and um, volatile was a word that was bounded around. And I um, became quite obsessive at turning it over in my mind. And I was looking um, at the etymology of it, and it comes from Latin volare, meaning to fly. And in the um, Middle English period, it was used to mean birds, as a plural. So Look at those volatiles. Um, and so this became a way of thinking about environmentalism, bird watching, and um, how the public takes pressure, becomes, how the public sort of pressurizes our inner lives in these times. Cuckoo song. <coughs> the summer's vocabulary shook me into atoms, broke me like a line an Elizabethan feat of engineering. Focus on the conundrum of the lake. Forever chemicals and microplastics constitute our makeup, our sociality. Fascism grew in a petri dish of native bluebells, mediation, and cuckoo spit. I was talking about migratory birds when you interrupted me with a shadow. Sing cuckoo. Off to court, jail, said the topless man, dripping with summer in our broken council of summer. I was talking about relationality to the shadow in your lung, the season interrupting with static, hypervisibility poor, 
to very poor. Leaves fall from curated trees. We live in a utopia, said the cuckoo, just not ours. I was happy until I wasn't in our imagined community. It took a double impeachment to understand why you can't smoke near petrol stations. Why the lake was green with foam at the fret, only fantasy, the line, imaginary. All cities are carbon captures of themselves. The light's so bright that night flowers don't bloom. What does object permanence mean when the, when the occupying forces cut off power and water to the besieged? I was dreaming of continuous motion as the northern lights fluked over England. What are your theories of futurity? This is a job interview. The kind of day when the unthinkable is ossified, metastasized. Could this be literal, non-compliant with surplus beauty? Today we begin with the problem of endings. The lyric is night skying. The villagers walled in the cuckoo, but never built a roof. It flies away, lubricating the present. This poem, I really like moorlands, I'm sure a lot of people can agree. Bradford is full of um, beautiful moorlands, but this is about a moorland in Buxton, or Axedge Moor, so closer to here. And um, as Janet noted, I run a programme of events in Bradford called Moor Song, and um, I've been writing these poems about moors, and I've been calling them Moor Songs, um, just to make myself happy, if nothing else. <laughs> Axedge Moor. Across vacant moorland, two golden plover exchange sonar like <coughs> lily of the valley. Nab, jutstone, outrock, from which we step down into words for mist, mizzle, broom, harm. So pervasive, the moorland disappears into echo location. Taking the opportunity to breach this open plain, volant contours split smur before settling in stubble. Their summer plumage is gritstone, pewing coal extensive. We are back at the nab. No, back at the trig. No, back at the words for mist, sonar, convergence, bleak, source of several rivers, dove, Manifold, Dane, Y, and Goit. Predetermined for wet weather. Plover from Pluvia, meaning rain. I was running away from my body in the fog towards your body. The final poem I will read today is called Time Loop. And the occasion for this poem um, was when I was commuting from Bradford uh, to Manchester, I was getting the train and it stops at Low Moor, which is a very, very early stop in the, in the route. And the tannoy system was broken, the automated tannoy system. Um, so we pull in into Manchester and it'd say the next stop is Low Moor. And everyone would look really, like, really confused and think, like, what the hell is happening, sort of thing. Um, and it was that sort of like early morning haze where no one really knows what's going on. Um, and it was sort of like you were stuck in a time loop. But then I was thinking about more about trains. I know we've all had a difficult train journey getting in here today, and just how sort of um, broken things are in England, and just how experiencing time is changed by interacting with these services. So just trying to see. Um, time loop. In the crisis, I lost all pleasure from circadian textures, evicted from the present, flung backwards through districts of rhyme. We are living through dangerous times. We were both awake, walking, talking about family, bursting like the flooded weir. You said politics is stuck on a negative spiral. Near the Pompidou last winter, the patisserie worker said, c'est catastrophe, as I fumbled my order in French. I know what that means, I said. The spillway overflowing with crud and moral abandon. 
I was out accessing the remaining red light along the riverbank. In the model village, I lost all pleasure. Songs splintered from their yoke, fastening meaning to place and time. Long-tailed tits winter in non-domicile shrubs. Inflation reaches the evergreen and everything gained is. I wanted to clear some space in my head. So I clogged it up with every conceivable form of media. Is this the end of wellness? Roofs of unaffordable houses quaint with snow. A riot of stars in the protected sky. In the crisis, I was up to my poor shoulders in snow. I clogged my head with protest. The moon puffed a backlog of smoke. Thank you very much. <laughs>